Awesome. Our next presenter is Brian Sperlingano, uh, um, I believe Vice President of OpenStreetMap US, a board member, and also head of the OSM Americana um, cartographic style project. So take it away, Brian. All righty. Let me just uh, see if I can figure out how to share here. You're on screen. All right. Do I have the actual presenter view or do I have the wrong view? We're seeing presenter view, actually. Okay, cool. Awesome. Oh, my. No, no that's the wrong one. We want, we want oh, to see shoot. The, uh, the other one. Uh, hold on. I think I'd be confident at this by now. All right, here we go. Looks great. Um, okay. We're still on time, so go ahead. All right, very good. Uh, so I'm Brian Sprolingano. I'm the founder of OpenStreetMap Americana, which is our uh, American map style. And I'm also the vice president of OpenStreetMap US. And so my talk today is uh, discussing how vector tiles make it easier to contribute to open source maps and lower barriers to entry for uh, people that uh, you know want to contribute without necessarily having to be programmers or IT whizzes. And so first, uh, what a vector tile is. Uh, so you have two different kinds of tiles. You have raster and vector tiles. A raster tile is a system where you have uh, the map uh, chopped up into uh, little squares. And so that picture on the left is uh, from Washington, DC, uh, zoomed in pretty far in. And so at different levels of zoom, you would have uh, tiles of you know, pictures that are generated or served on the uh, server or rendered on the fly and then sent to the user's web browser. Uh, a vector tile, on the other hand, contains uh, lines and points and areas and keys and values. And that raw data is sent down to the user's web browser and then the style is done uh, on the user's side. All right, so why do we like uh, vector tiles? So one reason is a separate tile and style development. And so uh, we have a, a vector tile server that we use in OpenStreetMap Americana. Um, and so if a contributor wants to uh, contribute a new icon or change some colors or some line styles or anything related to the cartography, uh, they don't have to change anything in the tiles. All they have to do is change the style. And since the style lives in the user web browser, uh, they can do that development uh, relatively uh, easily. Uh, so if you want to learn more about the tile server and how we do that for very cheaply, there's a QR code there that you can buzz. And so for about two bucks a month uh, out of my pocket, which is much less than I pay for coffee at Starbucks this morning, uh, I, I host this uh, daily updating uh, vector planet. So now suppose you want to develop map changes and you want to uh, contribute a change uh, to a map. So if it's a raster map, it's a little bit complicated. So first you make the changes to your code, and then you download some open treat map data for the uh, test area that you want to render. Uh, then you render the tiles. So you actually uh, run a piece of software that makes a big folder of images. Um, and then you wait a long time, potentially, if it's a big area that you're rendering. Uh, you hope that that's not a low zoom, in other words, zoomed out uh, situation, or that could be really low large, like an ocean or something like that. Uh, and that can use a lot of uh, compute time and you know compute power that you might not have easily available. But once you finish rendering, hopefully, then you uh, run a tile server uh, locally on your uh, computer and then take some screenshot, post it up to your GitHub pull request. And so now you've, you've made the change. Now, someone on the other side who's reviewing that had to do all the same things. So you take your code, download some OpenStreetMap data, render tiles, run the tile server, and if there's something wrong, then they take screenshots of their own, they post it to the pull request, they have a whole discussion, right? So that's uh, that's pretty painful. Uh, that's the process that's used on the standard tile layer. Uh, so uh, in a vector system, you make the changes to your code, you run a local server, which is pointing to the vector tile server, and then you can take a screenshot so there's no rendering of tiles. Uh, you know, it runs in the matter of, uh, you know, a minute or really a few seconds. Uh, and so it's so simple that uh, even a GitHub action could do it. And so that's what we've done. And so uh, in Americana now, uh, when you submit a pull request, it will compile that code. And again, this is just a small amount of like HTML and JavaScript. It will publish it up to a, an S3 bucket on Amazon Web Services. And 
we've got a little uh, HTTPS front end, which is a feature you can enable in AWS buckets. And then we post uh, uh, post a series of links to uh, the checks tab in, uh, in GitHub. And now you've got a live PR preview. And so a reviewer can now click on that map icon and they can see a live running map uh, of your change without anybody having to render every, anything and within a few minutes. Uh, so another thing we did was, well, you know, since we can do that, uh, we could probably just take a screenshot of the uh, previous map and, and the a map associated with the chain that you submitted. And then we do side-by-side -side comparisons. And so we have these visual unit tests, right? And so uh, what you have on the screen here is uh, a unit test from a pull request that we have live right now for adding icon to libraries. And you can see the icon not there on the left, you can see it there on the left, right, and you can see the changes. And uh, and this sticks, right? And so the next time someone modifies some something in this map window, uh, it'll show you the change. And so you can make sure that you don't have any uh, regressions. So how this works is, uh, so we got our tile server, and then uh, we have a file that has a bunch of sample locations. And you can see how we've sort of defined the zoom, lat long, and you know we gave it a name, and uh, you know how many pixels wide and high we want it to be. Um, and we have a long file of all these uh, different possible locations. And then uh, the GitHub action will take uh, the current version pilot, run it, uh, run a little web server, uh, and then do the same thing with the PR, generate two folders of map samples, uh, compare them, uh, find the ones that are different, and then those get uh, packaged up, published to uh, AWS, and uh, and then a little bit of code sort of update that checks tab to show the ones that are different. Uh, so from the contributor perspective, uh, this is fantastic, right? So you're making this pull request, uh, you can show the reviewer how your map looks live, one click on the fly, uh, nothing funny to do, no compiling code, doesn't matter what kind of computer you have. You could pull it up on your smartphone. You don't even need a computer. Uh, and also it lets the reviewer actually see how it performs uh, sort of in the real world. Um, and so uh, it, I can compare real world conformance on a live running map on my device and not rely on something compiled and run locally. And also because you have this live running code, you can create links to the live running code uh, in the new map. And so you can say, hey, uh, you know, thanks for the change. I looked at uh, this little section of the map over here and I saw this problem and, and, and here's the link and then everyone can click on that link and go to it. And so in the end, we're allowing contributors to focus on the maps and the cartography and, and the style and the things that matter and not fighting with the uh, IT and programming to make it all work. Uh, so uh, we always like people to get involved. Uh, we get lots to do uh, with lots of points of interest to render. There's lots of work to do with the roads. Uh, I don't think we even have trails yet. And so there's a question on that in, in a prior presentation. Uh, so please get involved. This is a GitHub space. Uh, all of the code uh, behind all of this continuous integration that I've shown is there. Uh, we've got a very active uh, Slack channel on OpenTube.us Slack. So Americana Map Style is the name of that channel. There's a couple hundred folks there. And uh, you know, by all means, check out on YouTube uh, some of our past presentations that we've made at past uh, in-person and virtual map conference. Okay, well, with that, we'll stand by for uh, any questions if we have time for that. Let's see. Yeah, thanks a lot, Brian. Uh, we have a few questions. If you can see the QA, you can go ahead and, and read um, those out if you want. I'm not sure that I can see the QA here. I see a bunch um, of stuff about magic wands. Uh, let's see. Oh, those are older questions, actually. Let me see. I have a question. Um, how can somebody use the Americana map style if they want to create their own map or they create their own tile stack easily. I know you've done a lot of work to make that, um, make some of that tooling easier. Uh, I mean, well, there's two parts. Uh, so the the tile, well, the tile side, we use open map tiles, which is a standard schema. Um, and uh, the link I've got uh, a bunch of slides up uh, right here. Uh, that QR code will take you to how you can run your own copy uh, of that open map tile schema. Um, or you can use the community one, uh, you know, if you're a low volume user. Uh, but uh, on the actual style side, if you would 
like to run that on your own. It's it's just HTML and JavaScript because it points to that server. And in fact, uh, we've done that. Um, and some folks uh, have done that with uh, other uh, spinoffs. So aaroads.com, which is sort of an American uh, road group community, uh, have developed a style that's uh, based on a certain type of uh, older um, uh, road atlas. Um, and so that just involves uh, taking the HTML and JavaScript, uh, changing the uh, sort of JSON styles uh, that define how map library, which is an underlying map uh, library uh, renders. And so you can muck about with the, you know, the colors and the line thicknesses and, you know, what the icons are all, and you can just kind of modify all that stuff. And so I, I think it's pretty easy. Um, and so all that code is up on a GitHub space. And so it, it's CC zero. So by all means, take it, borrow it, chop it up, do something different with it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brian. I recommend anyone to uh, to get involved with this project. I've made a few pull requests myself.